Let me ask you something. Have you ever wondered what's inside your phone's chip and what actually makes it work? One side of the story is VLSI, where we design and pack millions of tiny transistors onto a chip. And the other side is Emirates Systems, where we take that chip and make it into something useful. So in today's tutorial, we are going to break it down both by the end of this video. And we are also going to study how they are different from each other. Now, before we move on, let's discuss agenda of our today's session. So we're going to start with first understanding what VLSI actually is. Then we will explore types of VLSI. Moving ahead, we are going to study about how does an VLSI system works. Then we are going to study about what is embedded systems, types of embedded systems, and also how does an embedded system works. Then we are going to explore the applications of both of them. And at the end, we are going to have a comparison. Now, before we move on, just a quick info, guys. Simply Learn has got e postgraduate diploma program in IC design, which is developed by IIT Bombay's Department of Electrical Engineering. You can earn IIT Bombay alumni status, and also this curriculum is developed and delivered by IIT Bombay faculty. There is also a chance of campus immersion at IIT Bombay, and you can earn 36 outreach programs, credits, and diploma from IIT Bombay. So hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. Now before you move on, there is a short quiz to test your knowledge about VLSI. So what is the main focus of VLSI design? And your options are writing firmware for ICs, hardware design at the chip level, integrating sensors with microcontrollers, or real-time task scheduling. So guys, mention your answers in the comment section below. Now before we move on, I request you guys that do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon for further updates. Now let's get started. So let us start by first understanding what is VLSI. VLSI stands for Very Large Scale Integration. In simple terms, it's a process of putting hundreds and thousands and even millions of transistors onto a single silicon chip. With modern VLSI, we can take an entire digital system and shrink it down on that one chip. Now the question is, why do we even care? Because it means smaller devices, faster speeds, and lower costs. Imagine replacing an entire motherboard worth of circuits with something the size of your fingernail, and that's the magic of VLSI. So you can just take an analogy like if you're in a stadium, like millions of people are there, then that forms a VLSI system. And without VLSI, there would be no AI, no laptops, or no TVs. So I hope so you have got a brief idea regarding VLSI. Now let's discuss the types of VLSI. So first one we have is Advanced Digital VLSI. This is what powers your microprocessors, RAMs, and DSP chips. So in these devices, advanced digital VLSI is used. Next up we have is analog VLSI. This works with real world signals like sound and light. You can find it in amplifiers, filters, and in sensors. Next up we have is mixed signal VLSI, which is a mix of both worlds. For example, an ADC, meaning analog to digital converter that takes sound signal and turns it into data your phone can process. So this comes under mixed signal VLSI. Now you would be wondering, how does VLSI works? So let us explore step by step. So the first step is design. First, engineers make plan on a paper or a computer about how chip should behave, like drawing a blueprint of a house. Next task we have is simulation. Before making the real chip, the design is tested on a computer to check everything that works correctly. Kind of like running a game in a demo mode to spot mistakes. Next up, we have fabrication. Now, once the design is ready, it is sent into a factory where chip is actually built on a tiny piece of silicon, layer by layer. Just like constructing a real building from the blueprint. And finally, we have testing. After the chip is made, it is checked carefully to make sure it works properly. The good ones are used in the devices, while the faulty ones are rejected. So this is how your VLSI system works. Now let us explore the same about embedded systems. Think of embedded system as a special purpose computer. It's a hardware plus software, built to do one specific job and do it well. Unlike your laptop 
which can run 100 different programs an embedded system might just control your washing machine or monitor your heart rate or keep your car engine running efficiently. Sometimes it works alone and sometimes it's part of a bigger system but it's always focused on one thing. Now let us move ahead and explore types of embedded systems. Now just like VLSI has different categories, embedded system also come in few types. Let's go through them one by one and I'll give you examples so that you can picture them. First one we have is standalone system. These are embedded systems that don't need to be connected to any other device to do their job. They work completely on their own. For example, think about digital thermometer. It takes temperature, processes it and shows you the result without depending on another computer or network. I like to call these as the independent workers of the embedded world. They just get on with their task. Next, repeat. These systems don't work in isolation. They are designed to communicate with other devices, often over a network like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or Ethernet. A good example would be IoT devices, your smart light bulbs, home security cameras or even smart thermostats use. Here's a key point. These systems rely on connectivity and without network, they lose a big part of their functionality. Third one we have is mobile embedded systems. These are embedded systems that are part of portable devices. Your smartphone is a perfect example. It has multiple embedded systems inside it. From camera control system to GPS tracking system, tablets, smartwatches and even handle gaming consoles fall into this category. The special thing about these are that they are designed to be power efficient and lightweight and also portable. Now guys, you would be wondering how does an embedded system works? So an embedded system works using microcontroller or microprocessor to basically process data from the sensors and also control the outputs from the actuator. The sensor interacts with the environment for the input and it has actuators through which it gives the output. This also operates on minimal power, often without a full operating system. And also guys, it may communicate with other devices with wireless or wired protocols. So guys, embedded systems are designed to perform dedicated functions. I hope so, you would have got a brief idea like how does embedded system works. Now let us move ahead for understanding the applications. So guys, you'll be wondering, where do you see these in real world? If I talk about VLSI guys, you see VLSI in phones, processor, memory chips, custom chips in cars and aeroplanes. Whereas if I talk about embedded systems, like you can find it in your TV's smart interface, your car's engine, control unit, pacemakers and industrial robots. Now, let us do a quick comparison between embedded system and VLSI to get to know like how they differ from each other. So guys, our first parameter is focus. VLSI stands for very large scale integration and it focuses on building the chip by itself. The job is to turn logic into a physical silicon design, like choosing gates, placing or wiring them, and ensuring the chip can be manufactured. Next, if I talk about embedded system, it focuses on using chips to build a working product. It blends hardware, meaning boards, sensors, actuators, with software, or we say as firmware, so a device performs a specific task. For example, washing machine, or like ABS braking. In short, if I have to say, VLSI makes the brain, whereas embedded puts the brain into a body and teach it to act. Next up, we have complexity. Complexity comes from sheer scale and physics. You can imagine billions of tiny switches packed tightly and signal timing at nanoseconds. You'll get heat, power and manufacturing. You must optimize power performance area or PPA to ensure that chip can be fabricated with high yield. Whereas if I talk about embedded's complexity, it comes from integration and timing in real world, like mixing many ICs, like microcontrollers, SOCs, or memory sensors, radios, writing firmware, etc. It deals with handling interrupts, meeting real-time deadlines, and coping with noisy environments, batteries, and user behavior. For example, like VLSI team builds a smartphone SOC with CPU or GPU, and Embedded team designs the phone's boards, drivers, power modes and code that makes cameras, touchscreen radios and apps to work reliably together. 
Now let us discuss about the design goals. The primary goals for VLSI are speed, energy efficiency and chip size, which depends obviously on PPA, plus yield meaning how many good chips per wafer it can get, and also cost per chip. Whereas if I talk about Emirates systems, here primary goals are real-time correctness and reliability, like meeting deadlines every time. It also focuses on like how is the battery life and also low power consumption and also real-time operation. So these are the design goals for VLSI and also Emirates system. At the end, if I would say VLSI optimizes a multiplier so that it runs faster with less power and fewer transistors, whereas Emirates systems are designed in such a way that it ensures motor starts exactly 10 milliseconds after a button is pressed. And also the display or the UI updates smoothly and battery lasts all day. So these are some of the design goals for Emirates systems. So that was all for today's session guys. I hope so you would have enjoyed our today's video. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope so you would have enjoyed our today's video on Emirates system versus VLSI. If you have any doubt, then drop a comment in the comment section below. Our team of experts will get back to you. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon given below so that you don't miss out any tech content from our channel.